Imagine a confidant so in tune with you that they grasp your struggles without a word being spoken. They offer not just advice to you, but also comfort. Someone who knows your every thought, your every problem, your every concern. And not just that, they have the ability to change everything. This confidant is of course none other than Allah. And you can especially find this extraordinary bond in the serenity of night prayers. And if that's the case on any night of the year, imagine how much more profound it would be during Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm your brother Abu Abdus Salam speaking to you from the blessed city of Mecca. That's Mecca al Mukarrama. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as saying, He who fasts during Ramadan with Iman and seeking his reward from Allah will have his past sins forgiven. He who prays during the night in Ramadan with Iman and seeking his reward from Allah will have his past sins forgiven. And he who passes Laylatul Qadr, the night of decree, in Salah, prayer, with Iman and seeking his reward from Allah will have his past sins forgiven. This hadith is narrated by Bukhari and Muslim and underlines the immense value of Taraweeh or night prayer. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, provided guidance for praying in Ramadan, emphasizing the importance of Taraweeh and seeking Laylatul Qadr. Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once offered taraweeh prayer in the masjid and the people also prayed along with him. He then prayed on the following night and the people gathered in large numbers. They gathered on the third or fourth night as the narrator of the hadith wasn't sure which one it was but the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not come out to them. When the morning came he said, I witnessed what you did and nothing prevented me from coming out to you except that I feared that this prayer, meaning taraweeh prayer, might have become prescribed for you. This hadith was authenticated by Albani and reported by Abu Dawood. So originally the Prophet wasallam led the taraweeh prayer in jama'ah two or three times for two or three nights. However, he feared that it would become obligatory, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make it obligatory upon the ummah if he kept praying it with them in congregation. So he stopped praying taraweeh in congregation with the companions, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them. Later on, after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa passed away, Umar radiallahu anhu renewed this prophetic practice during his caliphate because then at that point, it was no longer possible for taraweeh to become obligatory since revelation from the Quran and Sunnah had already been completed and the Prophet ﷺ, as I mentioned had already passed away. So that congregational night prayer was in Ramadan. Taraweeh is not just a ritual, it's a spiritual journey. Each raka'ah, each prostration brings us closer to Allah, fostering patience, humility and devotion. It's about pondering over the Quran and listening intently, listening with khushu' to the Imam as he recites the magnificent and awe-inspiring words of Allah. There was a special dedication and spiritual depth that the early Muslims had during Ramadan. They extended their night prayers, standing in devotion for long hours, finding sweetness in recitation despite its length. Their commitment to taraweeh, reciting and deeply contemplating on these beautiful ayat of the Quran inspires us to embrace the spirit of Ramadan fully. Knowing this motivates us to revive this beautiful tradition, balancing true worship of Allah with the joy of connecting with the Quran. Sa'id ibn Abi Sa'id al-Maqburi narrated, he said that Abu Salama informed him that he had asked Aisha radiallahu anha, how was the salah of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, meaning at night during Ramadan. She said, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would pray neither in Ramadan nor in any other month more than 11 rak'ahs. He would pray for and do not ask about their excellence or their length. Then he would pray for and do not ask about their excellence or length. And then he would pray three. Aisha radiallahu anha said, I asked, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do you sleep before having performed witr? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O Aisha, Indeed, my eyes sleep, but my heart does not sleep. And this hadith was reported by Bukhari and Muslim. Even if you pray a few rak'ahs, ensure it's done with sincerity and regularity. Remember, the Prophet ﷺ emphasized quality over quantity. And for those unable to attend the masjid, remember the Prophet ﷺ taught us to revive our homes with prayer. Ibn Umar 
radiallahu anhuma reported that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Observe part of the nawafil, meaning the voluntary salahs, in your home. Do not turn your homes into graves." This hadith was reported by Bukhari and Muslim. This emphasizes the importance of engaging in night prayers at home as well. As we reflect on the beauty of tarawih, let's appreciate its role in cleansing our hearts, forgiving our sins and bringing us closer to our Creator. This Ramadan, let's commit to revitalizing our tarawih prayers with dedication and concentration. Every step you take towards Allah brings countless blessings. And there's one secret of tarawih prayers that will completely transform your life. In fact, doing this in Ramadan helps to make this a habit so we can continue it even after Ramadan. And that is to make dua in sajda while you're prostrating. Ask Allah, invoke Him for anything and in any language, even if you do not know Arabic. To make dua in sajda or prostration, just ask Allah for anything after saying Subhana Rabbi Al A'la one or three times while in prostration. Speak to Allah and make Him your closest friend, your closest confidant and watch how it transforms your life. Note that when you're praying taraweeh in the masjid, you should pray the number of raka'as according to whatever the Imam prays. If he prays 11 raka'as, pray 11. If he prays 23 raka'as, pray 23. If he prays 13 raka'as, more or less, pray that because you get the reward for the whole night's prayer, as long as you pray with the Imam until the Imam says Salam, meaning until he finishes the night prayer. So what has been your most memorable experience with the Taraweeh prayers? Share your thoughts in the comments. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the strength, sincerity and consistency in our prayers. May he accept our worship and forgive our shortcomings. Jazakumullahu khairan for joining me. I'm your brother Abu Abdul Salam. Once again, speaking to you from Mecca. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.